day important day in the history of, of the tribe uh, symbolically raising the flag here is the first time that the, the flag of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes has flown here on this property in the 80 years since the dam was built so it's symbolically marking a very, very important period of time in our history, very important part. And I want to thank all of you for coming here this morning and all of you who have participated throughout and the future generations from this day forward are going to, you know, um, reap the rewards of all of the hard work of all of the people that that work towards this day from when they first started to build the dam an important period of time was in 1985 with that tribal council that had the foresight then to make this day possible to take the steps that were necessary then and we're very grateful to them we ask the powers that be in all of this, to take care of their families, to take care of all of their families, you know, for having the foresight to, to, to put this day, to put this day in motion. And for all of the people who have participated in it since then, all of the councils that have maintained, that have had the, the wisdom to maintain the keep the road going keep 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 the thing going until until we get to to where we are today and so it's um, it's with um, great gratitude that I that I stand here and you know at, at the end of it and at the end of that trail and the beginning of a, of a new one for the tribe that our, our children and grandchildren every day, you know. I hope all of you in your hearts that you appreciate the day and appreciate the period of time that in the future, how it's gonna be looked upon, this important period of time. You know, it, Brian kept telling us all along, he, he was counting down the days for, you know, when it was, hundreds of days away I was 
you know, <laughs> skeptical about it. Saying, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And but as the every time we'd meet, and he would tell us how many days it was, you know, it started getting, started feeling it more and more. And so, you know, I appreciate Brian and all of the the board, all of their hard work that went into making sure that we're ready. We're very ready for this day. And, and, and so I have a, a lot of confidence that, uh, that, that uh, the people that we have in place, everybody that, that is, you know, is, is going to carry this forward in a really good way. And all of the skeptics will be silenced, just like they did with all of the other tribal ventures that ended up to be successful. So thank all of you for taking part in, in this day. And, a special thank you to the Honor Guard for, for the, the flag raising ceremony that they did. So, thank you. great pleasure for me to meet you and your people here today in your homeland at this place of falling water, where water has fallen idly for ages, the gift of our great creator. <laughs> <laughs> it is only yesterday, as time goes, that our progress has made it possible to put this falling water to work for your people and my people. It has been decided that my people make this great development of your property, make use of this idle water for you, and all who may be able to use its power. If it shall fall upon me to carry on this work, I ask that you send your young man to help me, and that you come and set up your teepee, and visit us when you can, and watch the great work grow. There have been differences of opinion as to who should do this work, I trust now all will join to make it a great success. I want to thank you and your people for all your kindness, and I hope the work will be a success and bring to your people many comforts as long as water falls. He says, my friend, Mr. Kerr, Mr. M. Kerr, has brought enlightened to us for prosperity for the future to come. Then I thank many congratulations for what has done 
for also you white people and also my Indians. So thank you. I thank for to Mr. Kerr for that work he had done for, for us Indians and for the whites. This is we have worked pretty hard here for the last few years as we wanted it. He has some in people back there in Washington. Kustara and the Kutnes people shakes hands with Mr. with our friend Frank M. Kerr. And here we are adapting him as one of our tribes and people here for that we shall know him as our Kashmukwai. He's alike. I thank you. is like dotting an I and crossing a T. It's a, it is a single event in what I consider to be a remarkable, rich history concerning the, the Salish Kootenai Pandare people. Our nation, our people could set a goal years and years ago to acquire this facility and we could see that goal through completion. That's simply remarkable. It's unprecedented in Indian country. We're going to get control of these, this resource here behind us and Flathead Lake that feeds it. Um, again, for the first time in 80 years, we'll have control over those resources. Um, that of course are near and dear to our hearts as tribal people and uh, represent um, and are in fact the lifeblood of our existence into the future um, from the standpoint of the water and the resources that they provide. The acquisition to me is probably the most prominent exercise of the tribe's sovereignty. It represents and marks an occasion that's been thought about, contemplated, and prayed about, and uh, struggled with. And it, it marks a day when us as a tribe, we begin to exercise our rights and become an entity which is self-sufficient which is autonomous. This leadership and continued leadership understands that we didn't win a lottery, that we are reclaiming an exploited resource, and that uh, 
how we manage it and how we take care of all of the accompaniments, I think, is, is the real question. And it means a lot. It means economic security. It means environmental uh, protection. It means being able to address some of the, the needs that are going to arise in the tribe as generations that follow us are going to have to be met. So it, it's, uh, it's encompassing. Uh, we take people up there as I was growing up and show them the dam, tell people, well, we own the dam site. <clears throat> but now we take people up and show them and <clears throat> we own the dam. And I think for our offspring, for our next generations, it's gonna give them a great deal of pride. It was always known as a place of power. And, and so from the two cultural worldviews, in the one in the traditional Indian worldview, this place that has this power was a place to come and to be absorbed in it in a spiritual sense. When the chief was agreeing to the, the building of the dam, he realized that it was going to be built with or without our consent. And his job was to try to negotiate and try to maneuver through the process in a way that would cause the least amount of harm and potentially maximize the benefit for, for, for the tribal people. And that's what his efforts were about during that time. It's kind of taking all the struggles that the tribes have seen since the, the inception of the Kerr project and it's an opportunity for us to regain maybe what we've lost in the process. You know, in the beginning, there was a waterfall that was, that was there to help the people in a spiritual sense, to help the people through the power that was there. That power was managed and controlled and bottled, packaged up which was an affront to the way that it was viewed before. And now here we are in control of, we're the ones that are supposed to be managing that, that packaged up power. And so we have to look at that responsibility very carefully and manage it very carefully so it doesn't turn around and bite us. So even though the day is cause for celebration, it's also cause for, for sorrow and for mourning at what was lost as well. You know, so realizing that within, that there are always opposites at work within, within great happiness, there is also great sorrow if you bother to look. Yeah. Hopefully it means that they look at it as something that a, a, a better, better future, better uh, in terms of, of uh, controlling and, and managing something that I feel that is something that would, belongs to the tribal people in the first place. Something that was done many years ago uh, that altered the way of life of many people. I think it's time that uh, being controlled by uh, non-members made a difference in, in what the lives were here. The acquisition of the Kerr project to the tribes, I believe, means a, an opportunity to reclaim um, a physical, an emotional, and a spiritual place. Um, for our people here on the reservation. This was formerly a, an important spiritual site, uh, a place of prayer and a, and a place of um, making a connection with the, um, the, the great spirit and the, um, the one who gives life, the creator. There's been a sense of loss of that for so long for the Salish and Kootenai people this has been one key 
place of loss for that source of spiritual strength. It means taking uh, wrong that was done to the people of the CS and KT back in the um, 20s and 30s and making it a right. Uh, you can't really make it a right. It's just something that uh, you can take and do at the best with that wrong and make it something useful. It's kind of taking all the struggles that the tribes have seen since the the inception of the Kerr project. And it's an opportunity for us to regain maybe what we've lost in the process. And I think that the tribes reoccur getting back control of the, um, of the dam and managing the dam will f make them feel that they have retained and something that belonged to the, the people in the first place. Not necessarily the dam itself, but the location, the site that's important to the people. And with the people maintaining um, the dam, they will be able to protect and manage the site uh, culturally for the cultural purposes and cultural reasons that it's important to them. I believe it's an opportunity for the Skelich and Aksmaknik to experience some self-actualization in this uh, acquisition. What I mean by that is every person has a need to experience growth and realize their potential. Acquiring this project as a tribal people takes us to another level of realizing our potential. So in doing that, as we grow as individuals um, and as a tribal government in progressing through this emotional battlefield that we have gone through throughout the years, um, we begin to reclaim some of those, those damaged um, feelings about who we are as people and what our capabilities are as individuals, um, that I think will be a regeneration of the heart and soul of our people. Uh, elders, uh, the ones that have worked here, the ones that felt the hardship along the way, um, would probably be very proud of us that we're stepping forward and we're moving forward with uh, something that wasn't uh, that they said was here to help benefit us. Um, and along the way, it kind of turned into a heartache for our people. And take that and just do the best with, with what we can. And, and I think that's what we're going to do. It's an evolution of our people. And to me, I feel that this is where the struggle starts to trans, transform into hope and into change in, a, in a, a good sense. The one thing if I could impart to future generations is that this was, an, this was not an easy task. Um, and even today we struggle with issues of our survival as a tribe and our right to exist as a tribe. And this is, uh, this is but one step in that journey. And um, I'm, really, I'm really hopeful that in the future, people come to understand uh, the real value of this place and what a permanent homeland really means. So we have to be very careful and we have to tread lightly with that and appreciate and acknowledge that it was those people that were there with the, that, that were there for the waterfalls, those people that are also guiding us through to what's happening now, recognizing that and, and also using those values to negotiate our way through this whole process. This is really quite an accomplishment after 40 years of planning and, and um, diligence and sticking to the, the vision for acquisition uh, really represents to the rest of the world that not only is the Salish and Kootenai tribes um, a visionary people. We're also a, um, a people that have the stick to to get done what we want to get done to preserve our, 
our future. To me, it's a story that should be told and retold again and again because it provides hope. Uh, it is a dream that was fulfilled. It was a dream of hundreds of individuals that this day would come. Uh, we were able to accomplish it. it. It just simply means that dreams do come true, that a tribal nation can set a goal and achieve it.